introducing you to a lot of different concepts. Objects is going to be key to everything you're going to work with for now on. Uh, objects are part of all parts of Java. And understanding how you design objects, how do you work with objects, how do you create them, what they're, what's different about them from other modes of programming is really important. And so, again, we've only really kind of played with this, and we're not really even going to get into everything that an object can do in this class. But starting to make that transition to understanding the role objects plays in Java software and all object-oriented software is really vitally important towards your success as a programmer within these languages. So the key of an object is it represents something from the real world. It's going to be modeling some bit of data and functionality that we would expect in whatever the system is coming up with. Now, when we say real world, typically we're talking about a person, place, or thing, ideal concept, quality measurement. It could be like a transaction. It could be something that's happening, you know, like a shopping cart, you know, a, a, a concept from the real world that has been turned into the virtual world that you might not even think of when I said shopping cart. You might not even have thought of the grocery store right away. You might have thought of Amazon. Uh, so some of these <laughs> real-world things have started to become virtual uh, relevant things. They could be process elements from the real world. It's all sorts of, you know, all sorts of dynamic stuff. Um, so like we think about a transaction. Well, what's a physical represent representation of a transaction? Well, a receipt is. Um, so I can have an invoice. I can have a receipt. Those are things that what I could end up modeling as, as pieces of software that's out there. And so the object-oriented system is made up of the same objects that interact as far as a business transaction goes. Now, we are not an object-oriented design class here. We're a Java class. So I want you to be aware of these concepts. We're not going to get a ton of time to explore these concepts, but it's really important to get the idea of when I'm writing code, it should be representing something that would be happening in the real world. It's not just some list of operations that I would never bother with in the real world. It should be a list of operations that I could assign. You know, it, you know, if I looked at the behavior of a squirrel, I could assign these behaviors to the squirrel. Okay, squirrels run up trees. Squirrels, eat, you know, eat nuts. Squirrels bury nuts. Um, and then I should be able to give them a list of of instructions on how to do that. So to bury a nut, you go find a nut. You go to this grass, you dig a hole, you put the nut in, you cover the nut, and then you run back up the tree. <laughs> you know, that's that's something I should be able to distinguish, but it should be really clear who is doing that work. The squirrel is doing that work. It's not the dog, it's not the turtle, it's not the bird, it's the squirrel who's doing that work. So that's going to be really important to our system. So the, the mantra of being an object is an object should know stuff. It should have data it stores. It should do stuff. And then ideally it's communicating with other objects. So we talked about classes a, a while ago. The class is the box inside of there. And so when objects know stuff, that relates to the attributes. When objects do stuff, it relates to the methods. And when objects interrelate to other classes, communicate with other classes, that's the references to other classes. So it's one object keeping track of another object through a variable, th through saving data. And we're going to see this representation come out in Java classes. When I make a call from one object into another object, that may or may not be a direct communication. It might be something indirect because I somebody else is handing me that object, but I'm keeping track of it in some way. I'm communicating it with in some way. And you gotta remember, to do any work in an object-oriented system, I have to communicate with an object somewhere. I have to know who to ask. So in my example with squirrels, I can't ask, hey, some squirrel come bury this nut. I have to find a specific squirrel. If I want the nut buried, I need to go get a squirrel, a specific squirrel, and have that squirrel bury it. I can't just call out and, and make that happen. We'll get more practical as we go than examples of squirrels, but hopefully conceptually you understand the metaphor. You understand the idea of, I need some squirrel. I can't just hope somebody will bury this nut. So in Java, everything in software, everything that you build will somehow come down to an object. Uh, you're going to store data in an object. You're going to do work through an object. And even the parts of Java are represented by an object. We have a definition of a class that is an object. We have the definition of a method that is an object. There's this concept in Java called reflection, where you can actually, from your code, get the structure of the code in terms of other objects. So it's ridiculously 
um, object oriented in the fact that it's even built out of these things. Um, you can think of you know the world is is atom oriented because it's built out of atoms and it's atoms that modify atoms and you know things like that. Same sort of thing in software. It's object oriented. Now that being said, as a developer, you will never ever build an object yourself. You are one level removed. You build the class, which then builds the object. So when we say object-oriented pro programming, well, as a developer, it's class-oriented programming. I build the classes and it goes from there. The important thing to remember is the difference between an object and a class. An object is the thing that does the work. The class is the de definition of the work. So if you think of your, your, your virtual online classroom, somebody who's a course designer, went through and created all your assignments. And they created the online references you're getting out of Muse. And you're going off and looking at all those pieces. Now, I come in as the instructor. You come in as the students. We are objects in this scenario. So the class, and so, you know, as far as the classroom goes, the classroom was set up by some developer, some in this case, it's an instructional developer, um, getting ready for the objects to be created. So we play a role in the system, but we did not build the system. I did not build the assignments. I did not build the homework you're working on. I am just an object who's assigned the teach roles. And part of my teach role is pedagogical. So that's why I'm sitting here doing this lecture for you to watch later on. I answer questions, but I didn't create those things. I graded the work because they need somebody to grade the work. I can't just say, hey, the, the computer system, grade the work. No, we need a human to do that. We need a human object to do that. And so our object-oriented system requires you as the developer to go off and build these classes. When you build the classes, you're defining the functionality. You're defining the, the methods. You're defining the stuff that goes in here. And we're not going to get into this right now. We'll come back to this in a little bit. I just want to deal at the object level for now. But you're going to build the template that's going to go off and allow us to create the objects. And so this is important because your job is both structural and operational. You define the blueprints for the building but you also have to go off and hire the people to build the building um, as, a, as a developer. So I'm going to build classes, which is going to be the pieces that's going to be going into my software. I define the squirrel. I define the behavior of the squirrel. But somewhere in my system, I also have to have a main class, and that's what we've been working in up till this point, to define those objects. So I need to build the squirrel and I need to name the squirrel. I, let's name the squirrel uh, Steve, Steve the squirrel. And so here, Steve, this is what you are. You are a squirrel. And by the way, I defined what you are separately. I built the class, and then now you're going to go off and be that thing. So we'll come back to that. But this is the introduction for the context of what we're looking at this week. We're going to take the functionality we've been working with, and we're going to add in our own custom-made class and use that class to build some objects and use those objects to store and move data around our system. We'll do a little bit of functionality, but mostly it's going to be moving data around our system because this is vital towards being a successful Java programmer.